because it is both circuits, usually both circuits don't, like if you had a low charge, for example, both circuits rarely leak at the exact same rate. And these are independent circuits with these machines. So being that they're both operating identically, I would say that it's probably not a refrigerant issue because with the YVAA, the feed valve is opening and closing based off of subcooling off of the condenser. So technically, if you start to have a low charge scenario, the feed valve will um, limit how much it's feeding off of the condenser to keep subcooling up, which will starve the evaporator. That's my understanding so far. I am actively rereading that just to make sure I've got all that straight in my mind. But that's my understanding. So if you had a low charge scenario, that could be a symptom, is a low or suction limiting condition. Now, that doesn't sound like that's obviously with both circuits. I doubt that is true. So what is probably more likely is a flow issue. How about this? We, we could list out suction limiting potentials. So one would be low charge, okay, which we talked about. We could have a oil stacking issue, which gets us into the eductor, or we could have a flow, which I think may be more likely, or a heat exchange problem of some kind. So oil stacking is going to create a heat exchange problem as well as flow. So the charge, like I said, with the condenser valve, being that it's both circuits, it's not, I wouldn't think this was as likely. And in this, you're probably going to see that it, that evaporator sight glass is, is low. So if you have your sight glass on each circuit, most of the time there's somewhere between, say, a half to about a third, I would say, is normal. And then if you get down below that, below that, or just completely, like not even in the sight glass in some cases, that's where you're going to see a problem. So my, my gut would tell me that I would expect to see, with a suction limiting, low liquid level and this might be what helps me determine between oil stacking or flow if this liquid level in here is still up in this zone even though i've got suction limiting i'm probably going to really start looking at the oil stacking far more heavily because at that point then this oil is getting stuck in the evaporator and it's causing a heat exchange problem which is causing my low my, my suction limiting now the likelihood that that was identical on both circuits i would say is less likely now one thing to keep in mind is the ex or the both compressors run at the same speed so one of the things that gets tricky with these systems is they they share the same drive assembly so we have our chiller control panel uh, we have comp one and comp two, these will stage and cycle at the same speed. So in some scenarios, a problem on one can cause some weird conditions on two that would make you think they're correlated just because they share the same drive. And compressor two can't run independent of compressor one on the speed aspect. So be careful of that process. We, we don't want to get in a spot where we think it's both circuits, but it's really one. Now, I would assume in this case, you're actually seeing the alarm on both circuits. So both circuits are giving you that low suction limiting alarm. Now, if we were having a oil stacking issue based off of the sight glass, I would really want to go through that eductor system. We need to make sure that the filter dryer is in good condition. It's not causing a uh, pressure drop scenario. We need to make sure that we've got sufficient head pressure, condenser pressure pushing into the adductor. That has everything to do with how well that adductor functions. So if we have really low ambient conditions and our condenser fans are not staging properly for any reason, that's going to affect how well our adductor can function, which the condenser fans on this machine are going to be variable speed. Over here by the compressor, there is your uh, drive cabinet on either side for your condenser fan. So you still have the contactors up here in the corner. These are hard contacts to open power to the condenser fan drives. And then the condenser fan drives are what's actually feeding the fan decks themselves. So again, 
if you're having a head pressure issue, that's going to influence the adductors and your ability to return oil. So more than likely, though, I would I would really want to blame the adductor dryer or a overcharge of oil. If for some reason somebody added an excessive amount of oil to the system, that's going to cause similar stacking issues because we have more oil flowing through the circuit than we were actually designed to be able to recover at a given time. That takes us to flow. It is far more likely, given what you've explained, that we don't have proper flow. Flow is very likely going to be probably the most probable cause here is the baseline I'm getting to. I don't know that you have enough flow. Too little flow, you don't have enough heat getting into the evaporator, and that is causing a suction limiting problem. And if we increase the flow after we've verified the rest of this, I would expect to see these conditions improve. Now you might say, okay, well, flow hasn't changed. Um, so we're running the same flow that we've had for forever. That may be true. That may not be. If that's an assumption, I would say, don't, I would, I would challenge the assumption. Let's actually dive in and go look and see, you know, did a strainer plug up? Did something happen? Do we have a problem with the pump? In terms of the, the oil stacking, it would be an easy check to verify because with the evaporator suction limiting, we should see a very low pr uh, level in the sight glass. And if we don't, then my mind goes to, okay, well, then I've probably got an oil migration issue. Let's address that issue. If we're bad enough in the evaporator, but we still have good oil levels in the separator, you probably overcharged on oil. And that if that was done to both circuits for some reason, then that could explain why they both look the same. You could also have have it to where because they share the same VSD in the cabinet, that's going to make them run in sequence. And so you could have some, say, conditions that are that look the same between the two of them. My gut says it's probably evaporator flow. You've probably got a flow problem on the evaporator and it's causing both circuits to respond the way they are, being that they're that consistent. Because technically, charge and oil migration, I wouldn't expect to be that perfectly aligned, but they could be. So we have to be very careful with the assumptions that we make at any given time.